so let's try this one. We want to find the limit of the function by completing this table. So it's the limit of x divided by the square root of the quantity x plus 9, all of that minus 3, and the limit as x approaches 0. Now if you plug in 0, you'll see 0 plus 9, that's 9, square root of 9 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So we get 0 in the denominator and 0 in the numerator, and we can't have that. Um, that's an indeterminate form. So we want to look at the limit using this table. So what numbers am I going to use? Well, if I'm trying to get close to zero, I have to look at the it coming in from both directions. So I have to look at it coming in to zero from numbers to the left of it on the uh, number line and numbers from the right of it on the number line. And so we're going to, I'm going to pick some numbers. Let's go like negative 0 0.25, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. Right, so those are getting closer and closer to zero. They're getting smaller and smaller in the negative direction. And then I'm gonna use some symmetry for the numbers that I pick on the positive side and just use these. Okay, so those are the numbers that I'm gonna end up using in my table. Okay, so this is information from our last function. Let's go ahead and re uh, type in our new function. So let's go to y equals. Uh, we can clear out that old function. And we're going to type in this one. So it's x divided by, and then put in parentheses, uh, the square root. So it's second, and then this x squared gives us the square root. Uh, x plus 9, x plus 9, and then right arrow out of that so you're not inside your square root anymore. And then plus 3, actually, sorry, minus 3, minus 3, and then close your parentheses. And you could look at the graph. The graph will look something like this. Now you can't really tell, but as x approaches zero, there's gonna be a hole there. Um, it's not gonna be defined at zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at the table. So second table, uh, and we can delete all of these values. So just delete these values out of our table because that's not the numbers that we wanna use anymore. So we wanna use these. So go ahead and input those into your table and then we'll come back and see what the limit is approaching. Hmm. Oh, when you are, one thing to note, when you're entering in negatives in here, using your calculator, you can't use the subtraction sign, you have to use this minus, this negative sign here. You can't use the subtraction sign, you have to use this negative. Okay, so now that we've entered all of our values into our table, let's go ahead and start our reveal. Let's look at what the limit is approaching. So coming from the negative direction, we can see that as we move down the table, it looks like it's getting close. So we have an error there at zero. It looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer to six. So let's go ahead and go into the, from the other direction. And again, both sides look like they're approaching six. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could like look at some values uh, that are even closer to zero. Uh, like let's go second insert. Let's insert um, negative 0 0.12345 Hit enter. And let's see what we would get in here. So it's saying it's six, it's displaying six on here because it can't show all of this, but it shows the more exact value here. And you can see that it's getting closer and closer to six. So I would say six is our limit for this. So if we go back here, we can say the limit of this is six.